Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to another video. As you see in the title of today's video, I'm gonna let a TBR prompt wheel choose the books that I read for the week. I'm really excited, but also super nervous about this video because being a mood reader, I like to have some type of control of what I'm reading. Simply because there are times where I try to read a book for a video and it doesn't end up working out because it's not something that I'm in the mood for in this moment. But I really want to challenge myself this year and I thought this could be a way where I could have some type of control where it's like prompts and I still end up choosing the book instead of like being told a specific book to read. I hope that makes sense. So I ha I actually have two wheels that I'm gonna be using. One has prompts that I have no idea what they are. It's just a website that I found when I was trying to look for like a random wheel that I could use for my prompts. I'm also gonna be using the website with the wheel of names that has the prompts that I wrote. The goal for the video would be to read between two or three books. To keep things even more interesting, I'm gonna use both wheels. And then I have the choice of choosing one of those two books that kind of goes with the prompts. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm conf even confusing myself a little bit, but I hope that makes sense. All right, so this is the wheel that I have with the prompts that I chose. So let's let's see what we get. And this is gonna be the first option that I get to choose from. Read a book by its cover, okay. So basically the way that I wrote this one is basically choosing a book by its cover. Let's go to the next wheel. Then this one, I can't really see what the prompts are. So I thought it would be interesting to kind of use that one as well. So this is going to be the second option that I get to choose from. Publish in the last year. Okay. Easy enough. I think I have, I should have some books that were published in the last year. So, so the prompts were read a book by its cover and publish in the last year or read the book by its cover. It's basically like the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. But in this context is read a book because of the cover. So for that prompt, I chose Swift and Saddle by Lila Sage. This is the second one in the done and dusted, I guess, duology right now. I recently finished Done and Dusted and I really enjoyed it. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And then for the other prompt, I'm not sure if that means like 2024 or 2023. Because the way that I read it is like a public that was published in the last year for me. I don't know why I think of 2023, but it could also mean like within this year of 2024. But for that one, I went with King of Wrath by Anna Wong as my next choice. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a while and honestly, I just keep putting it off. I think it's because it's another series and I just keep getting myself into these like standalone series and I just, it's like book after book after book, which I love. But at the same time, I sometimes I just want to like read a book and not have to think that I have like five more books of that series. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just me. In terms of which one I want to read, I'm gravitating more towards Swift and Saddle because it seems short and sweet. But then again, King of Wrath, it's one that I've been looking forward for a while now and I've heard amazing things about this series. So I'm really excited to kind of get into this world. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go with Swift and Saddle. One, because I feel this one fits both the prompts as well. I love the cover of it. It's kind of given like comic book style type art and I really love that. And it's also published in 2024, which could also fit in with the other prompts. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. And I don't know, maybe as the video continues, maybe I'll switch it up and do a book that fits both of the prompts instead of having two different choices. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just gonna go ahead and start Swift and Saddle.
Honestly, I don't know how I'm feeling about this book. It is Monday afternoon and also I apologize because you're gonna hear a lot of noises in the background because we're doing some laundry so the dryer and washer are going. As I was saying, I don't know how I feel about this book right now. I just, I'm not really connecting with the story. I can connect with like maybe parts of the characters, but when it comes to the story, I'm not really connecting. It's also very insta-lovey. They meet at a bar and Ada doesn't know that it's actually West until the next day when she officially like meets him to work on the project that they're working together. I don't know, I feel like for me, I don't mind insta-love, but this is just way to insta-love because Wes already feels like super protective and like this huge attraction towards her. And it just doesn't make sense. I don't know. At least to me. Because again, I do enjoy Insula from time to time. I don't really mind it. But going from like chapter 1 to kissing with this random person. And then we're in chapter 2 and you're already like super protective and like jealous that she's talking about other men or whatever. Like for me that doesn't make much sense. What I am enjoying though is Wes. I really like his character. He's just like a sweetheart overall. And he's very protective as I've mentioned. And he seems like a acts of service guy which is something that I am appreciating on this one. In terms of Ada, I'm not connecting with her too much. She's very cold and very very to herself and just closed off but it does make sense when you kind of get to know her and her past. I just wish I could see the connection in a more emotional way between the characters apart from like the physical way because physically you can see the chemistry, you can see the attraction, blah 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 but in the emotional side of things nothing's really doing it like for me or in general or in the story to be honest so I am on chapter 15 which is page 121 so I have been able to read almost halfway. Also, we also got to see a little bit more of Brooks and Emmy from the first book. And I will say, on their, like, part, I was, like, laughing and giggling and, like, smiling. So, yeah, I'm still thinking about Brooks and Emmy. I do have to edit a video, so I think I'm going to do that for a little bit. And then I'm probably just going to chill and maybe watch some TV. I do feel like I need a break from reading, so I'll just give you another update whenever I read some more. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I have continued to read some more of Swift and Saddle by Lila Sage, and I am enjoying it a lot more than I was before. So yeah, I'm really happy about that. It's about to be 8.30 and I have to go into work in about half an hour. So I thought I would choose the next two prompts for the next book that I'm going to be reading. Since I'm almost done with Swift and Saddle, I literally have like about 70 pages left. I thought I could just already pick the next book because my plan is to hopefully finish this one after work so that way I can have the next book on hand and I can just be able to start it basically. So let me screen record. All right so we got it. So the first prompt we're going to use is going to be of the Wheel of Names with the prompts that I wrote down. The first book of a series. Okay, so we're going to be starting a new series. And then the second prompt. Let me pull the other one. There we go. I don't want cards. Let's do the wheel. So the first book of a series. And then the second prompt is... Written by an author with a different ethnicity than you. By the way, the way that I'm doing it moving forward is that I'm going to have to choose a book that fits kind of like both prompts. I know in the beginning I had like a different idea, but as I kept doing the video, I don't know, it just makes sense to like do it this way. So that's just what we're going for. All right, so the first book in a series and author with a different ethnicity than you. I know what, which one we can do though. Let me go get it. So my pick for this one is going to be King of Wrath by Anna Huang. It's the first of a series and the author is a different ethnicity than I am. So this is the perfect choice for right now. I'm excited. I'm excited. I've been wanting to read this one for a long time now. So even though I'm going to be starting yet another series, I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Tonight I am going to be finishing Swift and Saddle so that way I can just go straight into 
this one. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Last night I was able to finish Swift and Saddle by Lila Sage. I ended up loving this one more than I thought I would because in the beginning it just felt kind of like super insta lovey and everything just moving so quickly in terms of like the characters and the relationship and all that. But the author I feel like did a really good job at bringing back that slow burn aspect of it throughout the story. <laughs> Sorry. As I was saying, I feel like the author did a really good job at bringing like that slow burn aspect of it, even though the characters had some type of interaction, like physical interaction in the beginning. So I'm still thinking about the rating that I want to give it because I do know that I enjoyed Done and Dusted a little bit more than this one. And even on this one, when Emmy and Brooks like came in, I was just like smiling and giggling all over again as if I was reading their story. So... Yeah, I think for this one, I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars. It did surpass kind of like my expectations that I had in the beginning, but I still preferred Done and Dusted a little bit more. Also last night, right after I finished Swift and Saddled, I googled for the next book that the author was gonna come out with and I have confirmed it will be Gus and Teddy's story. I'm super excited for that one. Like I'm literally predicting five stars for that just because ever since the first book, they've kind of been the characters that I've been the most interested in like reading their story. So yeah, I'm just super excited for that. This was my pick for the prompts of the first in a series and an author with like a different ethnicity than you. So I attempted to read at least one or two chapters last night, but after finishing Swift and Saddle, I was like super tired and I just wanted to go to sleep that I literally opened it up and I fell asleep within the first sentence. <laughs> so I haven't read anything, but what I do know is that I believe it's a marriage of convenience trope. So I don't think I've ever read... Honestly, I can't remember, but I don't think I've ever read A Marriage of Convenience. I might be wrong, but in all, I'm excited for this one, so I'll give you an update later on. I did get some reading last night done and some more this morning of King of Wrath by Anna Huang. So far, so good. I'm still kind of getting into the story and the plot and all that. Right now, I'm on chapter 7, which is page 54. Got introduced to kind of like what the story would look like. It is a marriage of convenience trope, so we'll see how that goes. This would be my first one that I read with that trope, so I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting. I really like that the female main character, Vivian, is like a queen. She's very confident. She has her own things. She has her own businesses and all that. So it's not like she's coming from nothing and then marrying this like super rich guy. Like she is a businesswoman. So I'm excited to see how that plays out with the male main character, Dante, because he is a CEO, a billionaire and all that. So we'll see what happens there. I'm also looking forward to kind of seeing Dante's development because right now he's very macho alpha male type of character. So I'm wanting to see how kind of like that changes and he becomes a little bit more vulnerable as the relationship with Vivian kind of progresses. So yeah, I'm really excited to read it. Like I said, I'm still getting into it so I don't really have that much details but we did get introduced to the reason why they're going to get married so yeah I think that's very interesting. I have a full day of work today and after that I'm hoping to get some editing done so I'll probably won't get to reading more of it until nighttime. so I guess I'll keep you updated and probably talk to you tomorrow. Hey everyone happy Sunday! It's been a very busy weekend, so I have not been able to pick up the camera as much, but I'm still reading King of Wrath by Anna Huang. I'm actually almost done with it. I should be done with it, hopefully tonight. With that said, I thought we could do another prompt because I feel like I could get another book in here. Even if I don't fully finish it, I think it would still be fun to do one more. Let me screen record. All right, there it is. Let me check the other wheel. This one, for some reason, is just not loading up. So I think I'm just going to do the wheel from my prompts. So let's see what we get. All right, book you recently bought. Well, I did do a haul recently, so I have quite a few books to choose from from there. So let me see. 
All right, so the two books that I'm kind of thinking of are Unsteady by Peyton Corrine, and then we have Powerless by Elsie Silver. They're both hockey romances, so I feel like I couldn't make a bad decision whichever I go with, but I think I'm leaning more towards Powerless by Elsie Silver because this is a series that I've been currently reading and I'm really enjoying the book so far in it, so I think I'm gonna go with Powerless by Miss Elsie Silver. Finally finished King of Wrath by Anna Huang. I was able to finish it last night. This was my first Marriage of Convenience book that I read and I really enjoyed it. I feel like it had a really good pacing. It had a really good kind of like emotional depth to it because I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit skeptical about it because you know, Marriage of Convenience, how are they gonna build that emotional connection but i feel like she did a really good job at bringing that aspect of it as the story like progressed and the plot progressed i'm gonna give this one four stars i was between a 3.75 and a four because i feel like for me i again i enjoyed it a lot and it was my first marriage of convenience so i felt like i couldn't give it less than 3.5 or even a 3.5 i ended up setting it with four because again i did really enjoy it so i feel like i have to give credit where credit it's due. I feel like what I enjoyed the most about this book is the mundane sometimes conversations that the characters would have just about their day to day, their work. And it didn't fall like this basic Roman structure that we typically see where it's like, we have the main characters, they're me cute, the relationship, her dad breakup, and then happily ever after. It kind of didn't follow that. And that's something that I really enjoy. And I was looking forward to really reading a book like this for a little bit now. So that was my favorite part of this book. Just seeing them kind of connect in like just a normal relationship way. So yeah, really enjoyed it, four stars. The next book that I'm going to be reading is Powerless by Elsie Silver. I don't think I'm gonna finish the whole book for this video, just want to preface that because I have another video that I'm going to be reading this for specifically, so my full thoughts will be on there, but I will begin it on this one and give you like my intro thoughts about it. From what I gather, this one is like childhood friends to lovers, and they go on like a road trip. So so I feel like that's, I don't know, it's giving me summer vibes. So I'm excited to be picking this one up. And I've been loving the Chestnut Spring series. I'm excited to see what this one is all about. And I'm actually not gonna start it right now because I do have to go to work. So I'm just gonna make some breakfast, work for the day, and hopefully after work, I'm able to pick this one up and fall asleep to it. Morning, everyone happy Tuesday I was able to start powerless by Elsie Silver I was able to get about 50 pages in and I am loving it so far I have been giggling kicking my feet and like I'm just really excited to continue reading this book because it definitely has potential for a very high rating because I'm already loving it and I haven't even gotten to 100 pages we basically got introduced to like the whole plot of like Sloane and Jasper being friends from like childhood because Sloane is cousins with Kate, Rhett, and Bo from the Eaton family. And then Jasper, obviously, if you read the other books in the series, you know that he was kind of like adopted by the Eaton family. Not legally, but just like he was made part of their family, basically. They grew up together and he basically considers them as like brothers. So I'm really excited about this one. We were able to see Willa, Cade, Red, a little bit of Summer as well. So yeah, I'm just, I can't, I can't say it enough, but I'm just excited to continue reading this one. With that said though, I will be ending the vlog here because I do have another video that's gonna come out that I'm going to be reading this one for. So I thought that it would be a good time to end the vlog here. I feel like overall it was a pretty good reading week. I was able to finish 
two books and they were both really enjoyable a cowboy romance and the first in the king of sin series by anna huang i really enjoyed making this video it was really fun letting like a tbr prompt wheel control what i read for the week so yeah i feel like i definitely can do it again here are the books that i was able to read for this video let me know if you read any of them or if you're excited to read any of them if you have any recommendations if you made it this far i appreciate you so much for watching and leave me a comment with the popcorn emoji. But yeah, I'm gonna end the vlog here. I hope you'll have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. You don't need to be prince charming to me. I just need this to be real. I don't need no fairy tale. You don't need a kill. Pray for me.